you're selling the wrong house. This is Acton Hall. What have we got here? Oh, nobody told me. All right. Hey, yeah. Uh, who are you, mate? I mean, we were told nobody were here. No caretaker? Well, not in a sports car. Well, what did he buzz off in then? And why wasn't he here when I arrived last night? You better ask Sir John Wilder. It's his place. Stop that bloody banging. What are you doing? They're selling your house. Didn't you know? But you can take it down. There's nothing for sale here. Uh, Lady Wilder phoned last Wednesday, Sir John. She said everything was. Well, I took the message myself, didn't I? One of you was mistaken, and I don't think it was Lady Wilder. No mistake, Sir John. A representative phoned next day about having electricity and such cut off. Uh, he took the message. Ah, no wonder we couldn't shave, cook, or communicate. A representative? Who? No, oh, Bert didn't ask. <laughs> We'd already done it. And had you already carted off Tinder, the caretaker? Yeah, the hospital did that, didn't they? Yesterday. Appendicitis. We didn't hear about it till this morning. Why are all the messages been taken by the labouring staff and not the clerical? Because we start at eight, and the pen pushers don't get round it much before ten, and these both came through about nine, didn't they? Yes. Well, that is Britain today. Are you sure you heard Lady Wilder right? She's seldom clear at nine. She said, Lady Wilder speaking, I've just made up my mind, sell it fast. I said, sell what? She said, the house. Well, Lady Wilder has just had her mind changed, so take that down. Right. Where are you going? I'm shopping. There's nothing to eat. There's no gas nor electricity either. What are you going to cook what you're going to buy with? Candles? Darling scouring the cops for wood, and Fredolina's found a stove. The original kitchen range. Who found Fredolina, and who is Fredolina? Well, Fredolina's the Yugoslav Dalmatian whose name nobody can pronounce, so we've, um, well, Fredolina, it's not so far off. Why are you playing cook's assistant to Friedrich Lakoka Varnik? who needn't be called Fredolina by anybody capable of saying Miss Varnick, particularly somebody in the Foreign Service like yourself, ring Pamela and ask her what she thinks she's... No. Tell her to get down here straight away. You know yourself, John, that every telephone in the house is dead. Well, ring her while you're doing your shopping. Do it while you're at the exchange, getting them to restore our lines. Then Pamela had asked me what I was doing back when she thought I was in Belgrade with you. And have the gas and electricity people restore services, too. Oh, and then she'd ask me what I was doing here when she thought I was still in Belgrade with you. Uh, drive me to the village. I'll ring her myself. What, in your pyjamas? Why not? She's still my wife, isn't she? You're an ambassador now, you know, John. Any village constable who found you flapping up and down the main street in your pyjamas looking for a telephone to destroy you. Now, get out, I'll do it. Ah, oh, come for the blow. It's years since I was in the Dodgem car. No, no, leave, leave that down. No, you'd expose your satins and silks. We'll be taken for a couple of queers. Well, give me your jacket. Well, I'll catch cold. Have my dressing gown. You're getting old, Don. It's hard to tell you from a bloody nanny lately. Well, there are two ways of getting old, John. An ambassador's who lapse into second childhood have to be nannied. And if Pamela's decided to sell the house, perhaps you shouldn't interfere. She, too, might know what's best for you these days. Don't stand about! Get that thing down before I'm back.
shut up the place. Mm? Tinder. I can see three windows he left open. Well, the poor old boy was hardly in any condition to go clambering around the place with appendicitis, now was he? He was in a condition to tell the ambulance people to shut that behind them, surely. That settles it. The estate agent's in here with a buyer. Oh, no. Estate agents always close doors and seals the drive. Don't tell me we're going to find some burglars. I'd let you reconnoitre if I thought that, Lady Wilder. Darkish place. No wonder you've moved. Morning sun used the tradesman's entrance. Hmm. Tinder disconnected the mains. I wonder if he thought of the gas. Well, I thought of it. And the telephones. I had the estate office disconnect everything, except in Tinder's quarters. Are you going to cook the chicken? Oh, I thought you might. While I cooled the champagne, Lady Wilder. Where are the caretaker's quarters? He only had a hot plate. You can't cook chickens on a hot plate. Also, he was a tidy soul. God knows where he kept it all tucked away. Also, he probably felt, and I hope still feels, that uh, appendicitis doesn't compel use of the past tense. And he probably locked his little all thoroughly up. Well, where are the mains, then? You'll be wasting your time if they're cut off at the source. And the uh, chicken is a duck. Darling, Sir John, is that you? No, darling, it isn't. But I'm his wife. Can I help, or would I be intruding? Uh, I thought you—he was somebody else. No, no, darling, I don't believe that. But don't let me disturb you. My husband likes his eggs poached. Uh, poached? What is poached? Keith Rich? You know, it's me. Ah, this time it is you, huh? What? You'll have to come in the way you went, darling. This is still padlocked. Still? Still. Pack it off. What? What is hack? Open a window. They are all barred. You couldn't get in, darling. I meant the wood, darling. What? Unload me. Ah. Must have rained last night. I have to sift the whole damn forest before I can find anything dry. I would have heard if it had rained. I would have walked you. Waked. Uh, wakened. Why? Rain is unusual in England. I would have shared it with you. There's a good little comic. What did you mean about me being me this time? I thought you were Kidrich, because you knew the door was padlocked and he didn't. Oh, Minister Councillor Kidrich is up. He went out with his gun. Really? He was promised shooting, was he not? He'd be the first guest of Sir John's to blaze away before breakfast. In Yugoslavia, Kidrich sometimes shoots his breakfast. Yes, but this is England. One doesn't expect 65-year-old Serbo-Croat Bolshes to wander around manorial estates dropping pheasants. <laughs> oh, careful. Once they start, they never stop. You fit with that fine garment. Poached is in water, is it not? No, washed is in water, if that's what you're offering me. I mean how an egg is poached. Right. It's how Sir John likes them. He's up too. I thought you were him, but he was Lady Wilder. Lady Wilder's here? It was her I thought was you before I thought you were Sir John. Well, who did she think you were? Sir John was little secretary from the Yugoslav Embassy, or mine? I am Kidrich's secretary. You tell her I was here. Lady Wilder, there was no occasion. She just came down to say Sir John likes his eggs broached. Poached? Did she have a handbag with her? Yes. Where was she going? Well, if she had her handbag, it means she hadn't been to the bedroom. She must have gone out to look for Sir John to say him good morning. Oh, well, certainly it's the same something. You like some more wood? No. You do, because I'm going to get you some in lieu of the bracelets you have deserved.
Where are you going? I was looking for you. I thought you were John. He's in Belgrade. No, he isn't. He's here. Somewhere. I couldn't produce anything. Neither light nor gas. I have. Both. Well, I didn't percolate up here. Should we start the inventories? I have. If you can't produce gas to make coffee, corkscrews aren't needed to open champagne, or is the champagne apple fizz? Shall I bring three glasses? One for your husband. Oh, let's be utterly polite. Bring four. Bloody fools. Go back to the village. Find them. Stand over them until they've taken it down, then chop it up yourself personally. John? Yeah? Fredolina the fodder, eh? Now, look out. Mr. Bird, you bag Sir John. You have averted an international incident. Well, come to think of it, yes. One down, one to play. Uh, pardon? I said with Buckshot, you'd only have winged him. Uh, does he often take his walk in pyjamas? Yeah, habitually, from door to door. I think Sir John has himself locked out. I think so, too. Ah, my secretary will open. She is up. <laughs> but would she hear from down that part of the house? Oh, don't worry. Someone's sure to. Hello, darling. Do come in. It's still our house. Yes, it is. If only because I've returned in time to prevent you selling it behind my back. Is that why you're not in Belgrade? I'm not in Belgrade because I... Oh, don't worry. I know why, darling. I just met why. Kiedrich. Is the old fellow up yet? Who's Kiedrich? Minister Councillor from the Yugoslav Embassy. Ah, Yugoslav. Then I've just met his secretary. Fredolina, where is she? You don't know. She thinks you do. Anyone comes down, she asks if it's you. Well, these are for her. Will you give them to her? Pearls or diamonds. Oh, so that's it, is it? First time this year. First time notice, that is. You'll need to be more patient. She's not my age. They so seldom are, these days. Where to get the eggs? For the third, the rooster's coming. That key. 
Friedrich? Yes. What are you doing here? Helping Sir John. Tinder's in hospital. We had to race down here unbreakfasted or leave the place open to burglars. Did we? Matter of finding a temporary caretaker. Always assuming Tinder doesn't actually croak. And while we were at it, we were going to make inventories of what furniture's for sale and what's for transfer to your uh, London house or storage. I thought you were in Belgrade, Sir John. Obviously. You give these to Miss Varnick. When you have done, help her to cook it. Miss? Fredelina. She's in the old kitchen. Where's that? I didn't know Kidrish was... Well, was a shooting man. Not at 65. Well, that cancels out Kidrish, doesn't it? He couldn't possibly be, darling. It was you she expected to bring home the bacon again. She sent Henderson to get the bacon. Oh, you're surely not going to try and put the blame on Henderson, are you? What blame? And where is he now? Buying the second batch of bacon? You're remarkably confused, John. You've just done the morning errands for her. In my pyjamas? Oh, why not? Don't you satisfy all her wants in your pyjamas? Bloody hell. I am an ambassador. I can't go flashing around in public in my pyjamas, and it's too damn dangerous in private. If you don't understand it, don't. I'm giving you no explanation. You never do, and I never ask for them. I haven't got all day, every day. But when you go brandishing your trivial little conquests under my nose in my own house... Our house? And why did you put it up for sale without consulting me? The wind. I was going to remind you, Pamela, that while I'm an ambassador, I require you to behave as an ambassador's wife. Did you come down with Hindlesham in that comic open car outside? It is. He let me drive it. I enjoyed doing so. And anyone could have seen you and told anyone who hadn't. Told anyone what? What you're pretending to believe <laughs> now? First Henderson gets your blame, now am I to? You're to bloody well remember that we have to behave in public, to hell with private in such a way that will not send shivers of delight down the grubby backs of the clean-mouthed, clean-living, dirty-minded taxpayers who are lusting to chop us down when we show the first sign of the common humanity that they're too narrow-minded, jealous, or incapable of enjoying for themselves except by proxy through their Sunday newspapers. You asked me to cultivate Hindlesham, Ambassador. I asked you to cultivate Hindlesham as Caswell Bly's private secretary what I didn't ask you to do was to cultivate my spy as your lapdog. You found him nowhere near my lap. You found him on your bed, which is in eloquent disarray. What happened between you and the fair? Or to be more accurate, dark Fredolina last night, did you take it in turns to recite the whole of the Kama Sutra? You hadn't shaved. Going into the village in your pyjamas may be looked upon as merely eccentric, but to go there unshaven is decidedly unambassadorial. There was no electricity to shave with. That is also what I went into the village about, to get the supply put off. And did you succeed? Henderson did. I sat in his car with the hood up. Dear me. Why bother to lie about a trivial little thing like electricity? I'm sure Fredolina's never been frightened by the dark. Have you ever heard of a public service which takes less than six months to get off its great... And where is Henderson now? Failing to get the gas put back on? Or is he perhaps where one would expect him to be, having breakfast miles away in London? He's at the estate agents, getting them to take down the sign which you should have never told them to put up. Don't believe you. Then wait, he'll return. No, he won't, because the telephones aren't working, so you won't be able to ring him and tell him to rush down. I'm still waiting for an explanation. You? About the for sale notice. Well, you propose we should sell first. Yes, but not when. When is now, because of the tax and because of the wind. That's twice you said that. Mm? The wind. You said that first off. Who thought of the tax? Hindlesham? Caswell. 
Caswell. Yes, Caswell. The good Lord Bly, your boss. Why not? Why so? It's a big house. Big enough for a large family. If your immigration department doesn't prevent me bringing them in? It didn't prevent you entering. I'm still wondering why you smoothed my way. What happened in Africa was between you and Wilder. My only part in it was to send him out there. I didn't tell him to ruin you. You think you can now tell him to sell me his house? I was never very happy about what happened in Malia. Perhaps this might make amends. Lord Lai, before I buy anything, even in my present reduced position, my first consideration is not why do I want it, but why the seller does not. Well, uh, Lady Wilder would like to keep the house, but uh, I warned her about the tax. Oh, she is selling, not him. It's hers. Uh, nominally. Also a tax precaution. They apportion what they've got to one another legally, so that if one of them gets run over by a bus, the other doesn't get mauled. Fatally, that is, by death duties. <laughs> I'd always heard that Wilder was personally careless about such things, being unable to accept that God intended him ever to die. <laughs> The house is in her name. And it so happens that on the day after the immigration department consulted me about you, I uh, advised her to sell. Because of tax. If she understood, might I? Well, um, it's like this. In Britain, a householder can sell the house he or she is living in and um, pocket the profits tax-free. But uh, if you own two houses, you can't live in one and sell the other without being liable to a pretty heavy capital gains tax. Now, uh, Wilders, they, they own a house in London as, um, as well as the one you're trying to buy. But if they have two houses, they cannot escape this incomprehensible tax. Well, if they quit, they can. You see, the tax people allow a reasonable period for moving out and moving in. Now, this uh, period is about up, which is another consideration, because Lady Wilder knows that, you know, she has to sell quickly. You think Sir John will not object? Why should he? He won't have forgotten my name. <clears throat> He's in Belgrade now. He'll be there for a week. Won't Lady Wilder know who I am? <laughs> you obviously didn't know your Wilder. It's Lady Wilder I don't know now. Well, nor will she you. I don't think she had a clue of what happened in Malia. Lord Bly, why are you being so good to me? Because you're black. And in Britain, we have a Race Relations Act, <laughs> which makes it advisable for people in public office to be civilized with everybody. Particularly black or yellow. Particularly and assiduously. <laughs> I've read this act many times. Should you ever be charged with contravening it, you may write to me at the Wilder's former residence and I shall be first to testify in court on your behalf. <laughs> I'll remember that. Right. That's going to run over in a moment. You're aware both taps run cold. I knew about the tax, but this place has its uses at the moment. So I've noticed. Why did Caswell go out of his way to advise you? He likes me. Indeed he does. Because he knows that you take up much more of my time with your suspicions than, well, than even Malia did. My suspicions about you seem hardly to exceed yours about him. Caswell weighed in with the tax just conversationally when I happened to mention the wind factor to him at that reception at the Yugoslav Embassy where everybody said how much they were hoping you'd enjoy your visit to Belgrade. What wind factor? the wind that blows the noise in from the motorway, and which is why you originally wanted to sell as much as I intend to do so now. The wind which blows it in for nine months of the year and then suddenly switches round. Which is why, if we're going to unload this place onto anyone other than somebody stone deaf, it will have to be now. All right, get rid of it. My advice to you, and then Fredolina. Yes, it is cold. If that girl comes up here before I've gone, it will snow.
You're going? Do you wish me to? I need to spend the day with Kiedrich. I need to spend it peacefully. It's important. It's why I'm here. It's why I'm not in Belgrade. It's why you didn't know about it. Because only Darling and Henderson should, not Caswell, to whom I tried to spare you the pains of lying for me. You could stay now that you're here, but not in your present mood. If you can't disabuse your mind, anent Miss Varney, then would you please go to the estate agents, confirm we're going to sell, and don't return, taking Hindelsham with you. And after spending the day with Kiedrich, with whom do you intend to spend the night? You haven't believed me, Pamela, have you? Hindlesham knows you're not in Belgrade. Why are you so unworried about that? After all, he is Caswell's private secretary. And my spy. And your lapdog. So keep him on the lead all day. It doesn't worry you, John, that the young man might want to be something more than my lapdog. I shall be back in London by 11.30. Will you be in? If so, asleep. Don't wake me. For quite a long while, John. Don't wake me. Oh, you bastard. Well, they're going to take the damn sign down. When's another matter? I, I think they like taking their instructions from Pamela. Pity we couldn't get her down here, John. Hardline Communist Party objection to participation by private British enterprise can be overcome by Minister Councillor Kidri. Do you intend to spend the night here? You asked me not to wake you. When did you get back? Well, I told you I'd be back by half past eleven. I must confess I was half an hour late. Who's typing in the study? Why didn't you look? Because it was the sound of a touch typer. You don't touch type, does she? Miss Farnick is at the Yugoslav Embassy touch typing for Minister Kiedrich. Now, might I get on with all this? Yes? 
Yes, he is. Is that you, Lincoln? His name's Dowling. Is that you, Dowling? What are you doing in the house, disturbing everyone on the house line at 1 a.m.? Working. Oh. Well, Henderson's got all that. Look, up the stairs, turn right, the last door on the left. Oh, and Lincoln, come up in about ten minutes. I'll have another reel ready for typing. Are they both working here tonight? All night. Why don't you do your dictation in the study and have Dowling type up here? I want to be close to the bed. Sleep in your proper bed. It won't disturb me. The internal phone would. They'll be yeah. ringing off and on, Don and Lincoln, for quite a while. Every time they get messed up with this report, which has to be ready by the morning. Shall I make them both some coffee? And you? Now we're managing on stronger stuff. Caswell Bly meets Minister Kietrich tomorrow at the Yugoslav Embassy. He'll stay with him all day, but he'll be a day late. Because you were with Kietrich all today? Instead of being in Belgrade. Caswell sent me there to get me out of the way so he could nail Kidri here in London. It was to be another case of the minister for special situations, finding the man who could deal with the special situation while the ambassador for special situations roved in vain. But this time, the ambassador roved there and roved straight back again, picking up Kidrish on the way and taking him to his country house for what Kidrish wanted, some shooting at sunup and also getting from Kiedrich what the minister wanted to be able to tell Downing Street he got for himself. But how did he, you, know what Caswell was up to? He, me, always knows lately. Hindlesham? Yes, Caswell's private secretary. He, me, wasn't worried about this morning. And without Hindlesham too, you wouldn't have known about Caswell's appointment? No. That is why my report has to be ready by the morning. Since I don't officially know where Caswell is, and since the report would be valuable to the government only if it's acted on instantly, I have no alternative but to ignore the usual channel, which is Caswell. Send it directly to the Foreign Secretary. <laughs> Caswell won't even be able to cut the guts out of it and dish it up as his own, which is his usual tactic when he's one lap behind. Unusual for you to tell me so much about your work. Are you sure you're not really telling me that you didn't sleep with Fredolina last night? You know I never explain about such things. There just wasn't time, was there? However vast the inclination. Give me a drink. This one's a bit weak for you. You better top it up. Is that the only glass we have up here? Hmm? Is it? Yes. Hmm. Well, we need another for the man I've been out with. Oh, and about that, why didn't you show the slightest curiosity? I gathered it was Hindlesham. Now, you've done your duty. Well, I don't want to see him just now. Oh, I'm not talking about Hindlesham. I'm talking about the man who wants to buy our house. Look, I've got a lot of work to do. But I told him you were in. If I tell him now that you're out, what will he think and how shall I feel? I don't want to interview house hunters at midnight in my bedroom with all... But this isn't your bedroom. Your bedroom is our bedroom. Upstairs. Lincoln Dowling has got all that. In the study. Yes, the study. I gather I don't need to introduce you. Hey, watch out. Good evening, Sir John. Good morning, Miranda. I 
fear I would be disturbing you. Why so? If not for the time, for the subject. The last I heard of you, you were in Switzerland. That's where I fled to first. Oh, Marley will be having a new government sooner or later. You'll be able to go back. Well, I fear not. My job as Minister of Home Security in the Republic was to cultivate the Chinese publicly, so that the left would not notice that my brother-in-law, the Prime Minister, was adhering to the British secretly. You mistook my pretense for reality, stopped and broke me. So now the right don't want me because they think I am pro-Chinese and the left don't because they think I failed them. Thank you. I still wonder what you think I really am. So do I. <laughs> that is why although Lady Wilder is in agreement, I thought I should consult you. What agreement? I told you. You want to buy our house? <laughs> I believe I could have tonight and would have had you not been in this country. Well, uh, where else might I have been? Well, as ambassador for special situations and trade, you travel so much, as you did to Malia. In any case, I should have hesitated. As long as you continue in your important position, I have every reason not to provoke you, if buying your house would do that. Why should it? It doesn't? I don't know. You seem to think it should. Why? I am in Britain as an alien dependent. You have to be under 21 to qualify under that heading. I was granted a special dispensation, you see. No, I don't see. When did you get here? Uh, last week. My father has been a British resident for 17 years, so... so... With all that Chinese money and a numbered Swiss account, you were able to pass yourself off... Your and... immigration laws compel unusual humilities. Uh, none so humble as yours. We know all about your father. I boned up on you and your family before I came out to Malia to scrap with you. <laughs> so, you know my father is a bus conductor. Still? <laughs> he retires next year. It is a problem. He's the only member of a somewhat multitudinous family who refuses to live on me. <laughs> well, that's so. I believe that at least about you. We checked it. Ah. So you will have also checked that although Naranda is my African name, my native name that I resorted to for political purposes. My father's name, my christened name, and the name on my passport is Alfred Hobbs. You came in as Hobbs. <laughs> I was met by my father, Hobbs. <laughs> Only my daughter caused a slight quiver in the scrutiny of the immigration people. She arrived in the uniform of her expensive and private school. <laughs> That never influenced you, Sir John. Hmm? Whilst you were making your mind how to regard me in Malia, that my children were invariably educated, not in Peking, but here. Well, Karl Marx did his homework here, in the reading room of the British Museum. Yes. <laughs> anyway, Trina wasn't in her school uniform tonight when you took us both out to dinner. I rather wish she had been. Lovely girl. Where is she then? Well, it was a little late even for holidays, so we sent her home in another taxi. You don't object, do you? I applaud. Thank you. You're paying. I will also, in case of second thoughts by your immigration people, be living in a house sold to me by the Ambassador for Special Situations and Trade, who, knowing me, would hardly agree with any other official of the government who decided I was an undesirable, deportable alien. Have you thought of that? Oh, yes. And you don't object? The only undesirable people in this country that I worry about are neither deportable or alien. They're natives. So, you have the house, Alfred, and my husband has a night's work to do. Yes. No, I will see myself out. Uh, you will dine with me again in my new house with Trina? If I may bring my husband with me. Oh, that. Of all the people to buy our house, it had to be someone you knew. Where did you see that it was up for sale? I never thought to ask. That's the external line. Do you want to be bothered with outside calls when you've got so much to do? No. Well then, listen to me being you, unbotherable. Yes. Is that you, darling? No. Darling, it isn't.
That was Fredelina. Asking if Darling is in. You will tell that girl not to ring you here again. The Foreign Office? Yes, that would be more apposite. That's the place to keep your foreign affairs going. Next thing should be giving me messages. The hardline Communist Party objection to participation by private British enterprise can be overcome by Minister Councillor Keatley. His name's Dowling. Is that you, Dowling? What are you doing? Is that you, Dowling? Uh, yes, Dowling here. You didn't hear what I said, Dowling. I said. Is that you, darling? Did you? Oh, I trust I'm not understanding you, Sir John. We've had enough trouble of that sort in the Foreign Office, you know. Well, be tranquil, darling. I don't know what sort of a boy you are. Miss Varnick just rang you, and because of her accent, she was misunderstood. It was thought she said, is that you, darling? Got herself disconnected. I now realize she said, is that you, darling? She probably wants to speak for Kiedrich. Uh, unless, of course, you're having an affair with her yourself. A fascinating thought. Think of the clank when we draw the iron curtain of a night. Well, anyway, come down here shortly and I'll, I'll have another tape for you. Yes. Don, all that stuff is in my briefcase, which you have. No, I won't come and help you to find it. Unless, of course, you've got some scotch up there. Yeah, well, it's, it's not as far as the cellar. All right. Sir John? Is that you, darling? Uh, Dowling, here.
the hardline Communist Party's objection to participation by private British enterprise can be overcome by Minister-Councillor Kiedrich. Say, while this report was ready by 10, you could have told me that on the phone. This is very important. I'd like you to hear something concerning Naranda. It should make compulsive listening for you. Well, it better this hour in the morning. The only undesirable people I worry about in this country aren't alien or deportable. They're natives. So, you the house, Alfred, and my husband's a night's work to it. Excellent. What if Wilder finds out Miranda intends to fill the house with Marlians brought over on fiddles to avoid the immigration control? Well, then he'll back out of the deal quicker than he forced Miranda out of his country. Wouldn't it be up to the Race Relations Board to prosecute him? Good night to you, darling. <laughs>